Uh, this is a very important moment for our industry, for space industry, for everything you do. Um, and of course, important for us because uh, we invest a lot of money uh, in Europe, uh, in the Commission, but everywhere else, for the member states. And of course, that's uh, extremely, extremely uh, important. You achieved fantastic success. Huh? That's, uh, that's obvious. And, uh, and, uh, and I'm extremely impressed, to tell you the truth, proud of so. Um, but uh, Galileo, of course, Agnos, Copernicus, all these are, of course, now references. And, uh, and I know it was not, it was not uh, 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 something which was written. But uh, at the end of the day, um, thanks to all of you, we, um, we did it. And, uh, and that's, of course, something uh, which makes me very, very proud as being now in charge in the European Commission of, um, of uh, space. Few successes, but important. Copernicus, Europe's eyes for Earth, uh, set global standards by offering now um, accurate data of the planet, seven days per week, 24 hours. That's an amazing achievement. This is recognized worldwide and used worldwide, and, uh, and, uh, and it is valued also worldwide. So that's a, a, a very impressive achievement. <clears throat> and of course, with Copernicus, uh, Europe has probably one of the biggest data providers uh, in the world. And you know that data is extremely important for all of us, and especially for me, but for, for our continent, for everyone. With more than 12 terabytes of, uh, of uh, High quality data, uh, Roberto, and we are looking for high quality data in, in what we want to prepare for, for Europe. Uh, free and open every day. My objective is absolutely clear here, to maintain the AU autonomous capacity to observe Earth and to position Copernicus as uh, the edge of the technological frontier. So, of course, we will continue to do what has to be done um, and I would like especially uh, integrate within Copernicus, and we already spoke about it with, uh, uh, with my teams, um, all the capacities that quantum technologies could bring to develop new services. The one who knows me knows that I have a, a passion for quantum technologies and quantum physics. So you know that, huh, Roberto? So we will, uh, we will push this. That's a, an extremely important development, the new frontier for uh, many services and innovation which will drive uh, our society at large for the next decades. Uh, but also, I ask my two uh, directorates, the, the one from Defense and Space and the one from Digital Connect, to work together and here to enhance our capacities to, uh, to enhance again everything we can do for the new generation of Copernicus. Second, Galileo. <coughs> Galileo, um, the past year have been dedicated to the deployment of Galileo, which is still under development, uh, but also the infrastructure and the software. And Galileo is now, of course, up and running for more than two years. And while still in um, its initial mode, service mode, the accuracy of Galileo goes, uh, I think, beyond was expected by many, including our American friends, but not only. So that's a fantastic success and achievement. And it shows that despite, I remember the skepticism at the beginning where this program has been launched, we, you did it. That's a tremendous achievement. And of course, we will continue to, uh, uh, to develop uh, Galileo. We have more than one billion users on the planet. And uh, I know very well that this number is growing every other day. Galileo is, of course, in our smartphone. Galileo is in our cars. Uh, it helps also to save lives. And I saw the announcement that you have made, I think, to yesterday or the day before, which is very important to activate the 112 emergency number. Uh, <coughs> also, ecosystem in cars. Uh, and of course, this rescue service. So my objective for Galileo is extremely clear. 
first to continue deploying Galileo in order to reach the full operational capacity uh, as soon as possible. Second, to continue improving the precision of Galileo with now a target of 20 centimeters, which will make, again, the best in the world. Third, to prepare already the second generation of Galileo in order to stay ahead in the technological race. <coughs> and of course, the transition batch procurement is ongoing, I know that. And fourth, to ensure the smooth development of encrypted signal, because uh, Galileo is also, I just remind you this, a strategic asset designed to be also used um, for military and civil security purposes. Timo, you know this, we spoke already a lot of this. So with Galileo, I will come back on some governance issues we may have. Because now, I'm, now I'm, I'm on the good news part, huh? so, so <laughs> that's the fun part. And the, the <clears throat> so with Galileo, don't, I will not forget. Don't worry. With Galileo and Copernicus, the place of Europe in the global landscape is absolutely very strong. And by the way, this is our signal. And uh, and uh, and this is my second message. Because of this, we just cannot afford to capitalize only on, uh, on our past achievement. We need to invest in the future and um, to get organized to deliver more. But we are mature now, differently. More, but differently. And by the way, we'll continue to spend a lot of money. You can count on me. I will be extremely tough in the negotiation of the budget. It's a lot of money that we will put on the table. It means that we will have to work, of course, better and probably differently. The space sector is undergoing massive change worldwide, and you know this much, more, much better than me, of course. <coughs> and it, uh, it goes through an important industrialization process, the result of which is uh, that doing space is, of course, cheaper and more accessible. So, of course, that's a reality we are in. Uh, now, and uh, that's why also we are not in a business as usual mode or environment anymore. That's over. In this, in this matter, it will be obviously, at least for what we are responsible to is, a before and an after the von der Leyen Commission. I just remind you that uh, the Commission has proposed, but you know this, of course, much better than me, 16 billion euros uh, <coughs> in, the, in the program 21-27. I just saw my colleague, Commissioner Han, to make sure that we will be totally aligned with the negotiation. And I know it will be tough, but you can count on me. Uh, this is extremely important. And by the way, in exchange, I will give the commitment that we will do more with what we receive from our taxpayers and the member states, and that we will enhance our capacity to work much better together and ne plus travailler en chapelle, mais j'y reviendrai. Of course, we will have to work also extremely close with the Parliament. We have many, many, I was very impressed, by the way, preparing my hearing, to realize that we have many MPs uh, playing a big role uh, and extremely well um, uh, uh, prepared, having the passion. And I learned a lot by listening to them. By the way, I learned a lot also in uh, some ideas to enhance the way we could use the money and the way we could uh, work together. Second, I want all the projects that we will uh, develop together to evolve in order to develop new services, for instance, security, of course, extremely important, fighting climate, and we have some ideas, of course, here, climate change, optimizing our use of raw materials, using the full potential of quantum technologies, both in terms of entanglement or security, and, uh, uh, but also in terms of Earth observation, and we'll come back maybe on this if I have time. 
Third, I believe that it is absolutely imperative that the EU space sector adapt to the new realities, geopolitical, strategic, industrial, and technology. On the third point, there are several dimensions that I would like to, um, to highlight with you. The first element is uh, that space is an enabler of security and defense. And I know very well that this has been a taboo in, for Europe uh, for a long time. One of the big achievements uh, of uh, one of the many big achievements of the Juncker Commission has been to establish this European Defense Fund. At my level, I was a little bit a small part of the thinking behind this. And the beauty of it is, of course, that first, we need, of course, to uh, take more credit and enhance and understand better that we need to handle more and more our defense together. But of course, we know that here, each of the member states have their own history, culture, and it is a very sensitive and complex subject that we have to respect, while it's important to move forward. And this is in this concept that the Defense Fund has been created, in other words, allowing um, every single country of the member states to participate to a defense project. And I will make sure in the selection that everyone will participate so that everyone will feel concerned with uh, the preparation of uh, uh, a true or more importantly true defense industry. And of course, space is an important uh, subject uh, in the defense era, and we know we know this. <coughs> because, of course, uh, we all know that Galileo, for example, has a um, defense dimension. We know also that Copernicus can serve security missions, and um, that we know that this trend will be, of course, strengthened in the future. So this is why we will progressively launch two new initiatives, and it's not a surprise to you. The first one is a space situational awareness, so-called SSA, uh, system to avoid collision and debris on key satellites. And this is really something that uh, we need to handle, but, I, but it will be difficult to handle alone. So that's where we, we may need some cooperation. It's a very important subject. But at least we need to have our own program to be able also to work strongly with others. Remember? When you want to cooperate, you must have something to offer. So we will need to cooperate, that's obvious. Uh, it's impossible to believe that we will be to do it alone. But in order to propose something, uh, we need to have our own program, and Timo, we will work on this, because that's something that I want to launch very quickly. It is extremely important to be part of this global, uh, global subject. Um, uh, as maybe a founder or precursor of a first European space traffic management system, and then be part of what will be done on a, on, on a worldwide basis. The second uh, important uh, topic is, of course, uh, the governmental satellite communication, so-called GovSatcom, that you all know. Uh, this initiative <coughs> is, will be done to provide to the member states uh, um, support in communication, secured communication, police, uh, border protection, diplomatic corps, civil protection during crisis, for example, and everything which will be uh, extremely important. And here again, Thibault, when we will launch some initiative in the Defense Fund, we will make sure that some of the project could be dual. Maybe some will be only for space, we'll see. But this is something that we will look uh, at uh, extremely carefully. Um, another a second element, which is of course extremely important, uh, is um, that there will not be a credible space policy without an uh, independent access to space. And I know that you discuss this a lot during this, uh, these two days. We have of course demonstrated in, demonstrated in Europe our excellency uh, when it comes to, to launchers, like uh, with IM6, uh, Vega C, uh, which will ensure 
Europe's autonomous access to space in the years to come. And of course, it is central to support, to continue to support the development of these launchers. And the Commission was, as you all know, the first institutional client of uh, IN6. We just pre-booked four other IN6 to anticipate the future needs of uh, Galileo, as you probably know. At the EU level, and thanks to the provision agreed in the space program, we will then be able to use the EU budget to support the European launch industry, and we are ready to aggregate our institutional demand to support ground infrastructures and the deployment of new technology. However, and here also it's not a surprise to you, in light of the development of the US launchers, which are, by the way, largely subsidized, it is uh, equally important to already prepare the next generation of European launchers so that we do not miss the resilability technology or any other disruptive technology. Let's come to my third, my third element, one of my favorite ones, together with quantum governance. Governance. So to develop this strategy, we need to work differently. And I'm ready to spend a lot of time with each of you. First, to understand what went extremely well in the past, and obviously we have a lot of successes, I already mentioned a lot, and so on. To see if we had in the past some errors, but to understand why, we already started. Lessons learned are always extremely important, especially in the phase where we are, in order to correct, uh, to correct what has to be uh, corrected. The good news is that I am an outsider, which is absolutely not your case. So you will benefit, hopefully, of my fresh eyes and also of uh, my passion as a former professor of governance at Harvard University of how we could improve based on success and error. So, because you understand that something I understood and discovered are just not acceptable, or not acceptable anymore, and if we want to be successful, we have to invent a new way to, um, to work together the Commission, of course, National Space Agencies, ESA, GSA, industry. I got some training when I was young because I have been an administrator for many years of LUCNES. So I got already a small training, I was I think, for five or six years, j'étais an administrator du CNES. Certains s'en souviennent peut-être. J'étais toujours un peu exigeant avec le budget, la façon dont on le travaillait, vous voyez, si on l'utilisait bien, c'est... Mais j'ai pas changé. Au contraire, je me suis aggravé. Mais j'ai toujours eu la même passion. Les projets qu'on imaginait étaient absolument fantastiques, passionnants, extraordinaires, exaltants. Et j'ai gardé ça. Mais enfin, maintenant, everything will be more costly and we will have much more project. So we will have to, um, to, uh, to learn. I don't want to come back on the, the governance issue that we had in July. It's fixed. I start to understand what happened. I'm not yet 100% sure of the responsibilities, but I will discover. And, uh, and then my job will not be to punish anybody, but to propose and build together a new governance so that this will not happen. The good news is that, to tell you the truth, in July I wasn't expecting to be here one day to give you this speech. Neither in September, neither in October, and neither in November. But here I am. That's life. And the good news is that when I saw this news, wow, Galileo, no service for one week. Wow, one billion users. You know what was my first reaction? The system has been hacked by hackers. And I was afraid because I know the vulnerability, and this is a subject I know a little bit, huh, Roberto. 
And to tell you the truth, I was really, as I really thought it was a, maybe one of the reasons. No, the good news is just, just because we worked badly. That's easy. That's easy. Much more easy than to, than to track a hacker. So that's, thanks God, we will be able to fix it. We'll be able to fix it. Um, uh, but we will have also to, um, to, uh, to change some rules also, because I, I heard when, when I was discussing already to, to, uh, to deep dive the first thing you do. So I said, yes, but you know, Mr. Commissioner, uh, you know, I said, we provide services. So we need, we need to have a zero default. And I'm coming in an industry where you, are, where you need to, to deserve a zero default. Yeah, but you know, we are still in development. And come on. No, no, no. We are still in development, so we have excuses. No. We are not still in development. Or maybe yes. But I don't care. We are providing services now. We have to change this. Huh? We are providing extremely critical services to our European fellows and industry. And by the way, not only. So we have to be zero default. And believe me, um, this I can tell you, but you know, the living service, when you're in development, is complex, but give you some comfort. Providing it as a service with zero default is another story. This is a level that we need to reach, and I will help you, by the way. We will help you. We will help us to be able to, um, to achieve it and to do it. Um, another thing also we have to be clear is that um, now everybody understands that what you are doing is absolutely critical for, for Europe and for our interest and our sovereignty. And this is something which is extremely important for this commission and for the state members. Um, so we will have to, uh, to make more robust everything we are doing, including, also, of course, the change. I mentioned already some of the elements that we will have to cope with because our British friends decided to, um, to leave Europe, and of course, we are all very sorry. It's not what we wanted, but it's a fact, and we have to respect the will of the British voters, of course, and we do respect it. But um, we will have to uh, also us to take this into account. If I know, of course, that the UK is an important member of, of ESA, okay. But the Commission is an even more important member of ESA. So I will have to make sure that our interests here, with our partners, of course, are well protected. That's my job. Nobody forced me to accept this job. But here I am. And this is also one of the reasons that I'm here. So we will work, but nicely, huh? but taking everything in consideration. So, um, Another thing I wanted to, to share with you is that um, we need, of course, to focus on more critical technologies that you will, you, you will use. Um, and I will have to, um, to, um, uh, to work on what are the critical technologies that we will need to invest uh, in the future in your era, which is extremely uh, important, and then to decide where to invest and how to invest. That's something that I don't have yet at my level. And that's extremely important that you can provide this. And of course, to share with everyone so that we all agree of, uh, of where we should um, uh, put, uh, put our money. Um, finally, because I don't want to be too long. Um, I said, of course, that, and I'm extremely serious, what you did is amazing. And nobody believed that we will be able to provide the realization and the services that, that we provide over the past 10 years in space. And now the good news is that it's so important that the state member and the commission decided to have a specific DG, Defense and Space, which is something totally new uh, on its own, that every single member state understands that it is, how critical it is to have this space uh, um, uh, ongoing strategy. But of course, and one of the reasons I believe that I have inherited uh, 
what uh, something could be a big portfolio, because it's uh, covering uh, services, industry, uh, tourism, media, all kind of digital applications, from software to AI to HVC and, and, and 5G and everything, but also defense in space. Everything is connected now. Everything is into relations. And the key between everything is, of course, data, computing power. <coughs> and that's probably why they decided to ask me to do this. And this is also why I accepted to do it. In other words, it means that we will need to work much more together, and especially in your field, that you know this, but I will make sure that you will get everything you need, and also that you change your habits. You will need to share much more data, to use much more HPC, AI, uh, and work differently with other colleagues, maybe not coming from the space industry, but which will help you to do what you have to do. And by the way, without these interconnections, no future. You know it, I know it. So this is why not only I will make sure that you will get everything which is needed in this new paradigm, and that's a new paradigm, including in terms of resources, investment, Roberto, uh, coming from, from DigiConnect, and the programs that we may have. But that will be something extremely important, extremely important for me to make sure that, uh, that we will be able to, um, to get it, and to develop, by the way, a total industry, not only with big players, which is great, but also with, smart, with SMEs. Uh, I see a lot of promising SMEs already in this environment, including in some hard technologies. Congratulations. But also in startups. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, and this is where, of course, we will, uh, we will need to be, it will be one, another way to give back all the money that we receive from our fellow European citizens and taxpayers. So uh, thank you again for everything you do. Uh, thank you for accepting me, at least the one who are depending on me as the, the new, your new commissioner, or too bad for you, I don't know. <laughs> but, but it is the way it is. But there's one thing that I would like you to know, that I share your passion. I share your passion. And my only will, and my only wish, is to help you, to help us, to do better, to move faster, and to, um, to become even more important. Uh, because everybody is waiting for us, everyone is watching us, and we know how critical what we are doing all together, what we do, is for the future of Europe, which is another of our common passion. Thank you.